In this section, 6.1, the first chapter or first section of chapter 6, we're going to learn how to graph linear inequalities. So from grade 10, you've learned how to graph lines. Now we're going to take that a little bit uh, further and graph inequalities instead of equalities. So for just notation, an inequality uses symbols like less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. These are going to change the way that your line looks. If you have, if you have just strictly less than or greater than, then your line is dotted. If you have less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, then the line that you draw on your graph is going to be solid, like you're normally used to. So these two, the last two you'll be used to, the first two is a little bit different. So from grade 10, you um, have kind of this notation, only now we're dealing with graphs. So you have bracket, x comma y, just tells you that it's a coordinate point. This, the next slash, basically means such that. It's just a type of notation. And then the next part that comes after is the inequality of a line. So it actually tells you what the graph is going to look like. Y less than x plus 1. And then you have a comma, and then it tells you that both x is an element of all real numbers, and y is an element of all real numbers. That basically just means that um, your line is going to be solid, and everything that's underneath Everything that's less than y is going to be shaded in because everything is included. It changes when you have different number sets. And different number sets are real, which the symbol used is r, and that means anything that any number that's a positive, negative, fractions, decimals, anything. Another one you have is whole numbers, which the symbol used is w, and that's only positive integers, no decimals, includes zero. Whoops. Includes zero. Your next one for integers, i, any integer, no decimals, but it includes negative and positive values. Okay, the only one that I'm missing here is natural. And the symbol for that is n. It's the same as whole numbers, only no zero. Okay, natural numbers do not include zero. Whole numbers include zero. So just so that you're aware of what, what the shading is going to look like. This affects shading. All these different number sets is going to affect shading. Whoops. So these affect how you shade. And the ones above, these ones here, affect either a dotted or a solid line. So how does all this work on a graph, you ask? Let's find out. Let's go through an example. So recall, this is basically from grade 10, grade 9. We want to graph this one here. Okay, y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 1. So my y-intercept is this number at the end. My y-intercept is 1. My slope is negative 2 thirds. So what I do is I start with my y-intercept, which is the number on its own. Um, I should have x and y. I should have a scale on here just to show 2, 4, 6, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, 2, 4, negative 2, negative 4. That just is showing that each line is actually worth 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to go up to 1 on my axis, my y-axis, that's my y-intercept. Then I have a slope of negative 2 over 3. So I go down 2 over 1, 2, 3, put a point. Then from that point, I go down 2, over 1, 2, 3, put a point. Or I could go up 2 and left 3. Remember that slopes can be either read with the negative sign on top or the bottom. If you have a negative slope, it goes with the negative sign, goes at the top or the bottom, but not both. So I could go up 2, left 1, 2, 3. Up 2, left 1, 2, 3. So I have a picture of a line. I'm going to use my ruler and line up all the dots. Yeah, they all line up, which is good. And draw a straight line through all of them. And there's a picture of my line. Okay, so that's just how to graph y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 1. Now graph this. Well, all this tells me is that I'm dealing with x and y. That's it. Yeah, I know that already. I have an x-axis and a y-axis. This here is my function, y is less than or equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 1. But if you look at this symbol here, this is just going to tell us where to shade. Okay. 
That doesn't tell us anything else than where to shade. So if you if you want to graph lines, you can change that to an equal sign and graph it like you normally would. Slope, y-intercept, nothing changes. So it's the same line. And the next things tell us that x is er, y er. That means I can shade everything below. I don't have to worry about any restrictions. It's just everything I'm going to shade. So how do I shade this? Well, less than or equal to tells me that I'm shading below the line. If it was greater than or equal to, that would be above the line. Okay. So I'm shading below the line, and I shade everywhere. Okay. Nothing is restricted. I know it looks kind of weird, but that's all you do. You shade below to show that that's it. And then once you've done that, what you can do is act, you can actually check. You can check to make sure that we've done this correctly. How do you check to see if a point is in the region? Well, if I was checking this point, for example, 3, 4, go up to your graph, go over 1, 2, 3, and up 1, 2, 3, 4. That point, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, is up here. Is that in my region? No. Can you double check? Yes. I can plug that point into my equation. I can say, okay, well, if I have my value for x and my value for y, and I plug 4 into y, less than or equal to negative 2 thirds, my value for x is going to be 3 plus 1. And I can actually solve this. 3's cancel, so I'm left with 4 less than or equal to negative 2 plus 1. 4 less than or equal to negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. No. Okay. 4 is not less than negative 1, so therefore it's not in the region. But if, as long as you have a graph, you can just check right on the graph. Let's check the next one, negative 3, comma 4. So I go back into my graph, negative 1, 2, 3, comma 1, 2, 3, 4, just out of my region, right, just out. Again, you can plug these values in. You can say, is 4 less than or equal to negative 2 thirds times negative 3 plus 1? Negatives cancel threes cancel. 4 is 4 less than or equal to, whoops, 2 plus 1 is 4 less than or equal to 3. No, close, but not quite. And the last one, negative 3 comma negative 4. So I go back up to my graph and I go negative 1, 2, 3, negative 1, 2, 3, 4. That point is right there. Is that point in my region? Yes, it is. Okay. And again, you could check in the equation. You could say, is negative 4 less than or equal to negative two-thirds times negative three plus one. Sometimes you'll end up with fractions, but sometimes you don't too, right? So those cancel, those cancel. Is negative four less than or equal to two plus one, which is three? Yes, negative four is less than or equal to three, therefore it is in my region. So you should be able to check based on your graph and checking to see if the points are in your region. And you should also be able to check based on the equation, plugging the points into your equation. All right. What if the number set changes? So here I have the number set at the end. This time we're dealing with only integers, only integers. So the look of your shaded region is actually going to change a bit. So I have x, y. Yeah, that just tells me I'm dealing with x and y, always the same, um, unless you add a third variable, which you won't. And here's my equation. Step one, change your equation to y equals mx plus b form. Okay, so I have negative 2x plus y is greater than 4. I'm going to add my 2x to both sides. So I'm left with a positive y is greater than 2x plus 4. I'm putting the 2x first because always put your x term first. Okay. Just on a side note, okay, if dividing or multiplying by a negative when solving, make sure that you flip the inequality. Okay, so for instance, if you're solving for these types of questions, and say I ended up with um, Say I had 2x minus y is greater than 4. So I subtract my 2x. So I, I'm left with a negative y is greater than negative 2x plus 4. 
In order to solve for y, I have to divide by a negative 1. So I get y, and I flip the inequality, and both these signs will change to 2x minus 4. So when I'm dividing by a negative 1 or multiplying by a negative value or dividing by a negative value, that sign flips. So it was greater than, now it becomes less than. Okay, very important. So this is my function right here, and I'm going to actually graph it now. So again, just treat it like an equal sign. I got y equals 2x plus 4, so my y-intercept is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, my slope is 2 over 1, so I'm going to be going up 2. Oh, well, I'm kind of off the graph. Let's go back 2. Let's go down 2, back 1. Down 2, back 1. Down 2, back 1. Down 2, back 1. Okay? As long as your slope is positive, your graph should have a positive look to it. Now, this one is just strictly greater than... See how the last one that I did was... Let me see here. The last one I did was less than or equal to, which means that the line that I draw is solid. This time, because it's just strictly greater than, I'm not going to draw a solid line. It's got to be dotted, and it's going to look like this. So you have a dotted line. It's still a straight line, but now this time it's dotted. So we've graphed the line now. Where do I shade? Hmm. Well, I know that my, my, my picture or my equation is greater than 2x plus 4, or 2 over 1x. So that means I'm going to shade above. Sometimes it's kind of hard to figure out where is above and where is below. But you should know that below the line is down here. Above the line is up here. So I'm going to shade above the line. But in this, at this time, because I'm only allowed integers, I can't shade everywhere. So I'm going to put in dots. Since only integers are allowed, I'm only going to put in dots. And you kind of put dots everywhere that you can kind of see, because only integers are allowed. It takes a lot more time to put in your dots to actually graph it. But most of the time you won't be asked to graph these, you'll be asked to kind of interpret the graphs and say, what is this equation, or what is, what is the equation of this graph, or things like that, right? So the dots show that only integers are allowed, nothing in between those are allowed. Only integers are allowed. Okay, and I can stop there. You can go on if you want and fill in the whole thing. It's kind of fun. But that's it. So hopefully that makes sense of, of how to shade. Now, we need to test a point in the shaded region to check that we've actually done it correctly. Test a point in my region. Let's, so pick any one of these dots that, you've, that I've chosen here. Let's pick um, this one over here. So what is that point? Well, it's, neg it's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6, comma, 3. Negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, not 3. So negative 6, comma, 2 is the point I'm picking, and that's my x and my y. So I plug those points into my equation. y is greater than 2x plus 4. And I check to see, is y, which is 2, greater than 2 times negative 6 plus 4? I can see right away that this is going to be true. But let's work it out. 2 is greater than 2 times negative 6 is negative 12 plus 4. Is 2 greater than negative 8? Yes. Therefore, we have shaded correctly. Okay, We have all the, the right dots in the right places. So in conclusion... We use a dotted line for less than or greater than. And that looks like that or like that. We use a solid line for less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. Those two. And we use dots in the shaded region when we have XEI or XE. W for whole numbers. Whole numbers work the same way, no decimals are allowed. Or YEI or YEW.